The traditional date of 476 AD for the fall of the Western Roman Empire is mostly an artificial construct. It was developed by historians in order to create manageable sections that are easier to study. Life in what remained of the Western Roman Empire continued after 476 in an altered form, with the law and administrative systems of the empire surviving. However, one main component of the Western Roman Empire did not survive, the army. In the east, the Roman army morphed seamlessly into the army of the Byzantine Empire, and this empire survived until the fall of Constantinople in the 15th century. The disappearance of the Roman army in the west was slow and steady, and no traditional date has ever been put forward to pinpoint the time when it vanished. It was eroded piece by piece, and there was no single cause for its demise. The authors of the 4th and 5th centuries noted a decline in the army before the empire was permanently split into two halves in 395 AD. Some of these contemporary historians were certain that the decline of the effectiveness of the army was the increasing recruitment of tribesmen. In 378 AD, the Roman army had lost a battle at Adrianople to the Goths, with Emperor Valens among the dead. The new emperor, Theodosius I, made a treaty with the Goths in 382 that allowed conscripted tribesmen to fight under their own leaders in the Roman army. At this time, it was believed that the barbarian tribes had to be accommodated for a number of reasons. The tribes weren't going to disappear, and the Roman army would never be able to defeat them decisively. The idea was that an active and continuous policy of assimilation and Romanization would solve the problem and integrate them into the empire. Allied tribesmen recruited in former times had been Romanized, indoctrinated, trained, and fought for Rome as Romans. But what actually happened in many cases in the late empire was that the Allied tribesmen fought under their own commanders, using their own weapons and fighting styles. For these tribesmen in the late Roman army, there was no standardization in training or discipline. They seemed to give up at the slightest setback, and many were known to abandon their posts. They also could not be prevented from pillaging and looting. The increase of regionalism, as opposed to any sense of Rome or Empire, compounded all of these problems. Tribesmen may have been fighting for the Roman army, but they were not fighting for Rome, which few, if any, had ever seen themselves. They were fighting for their homelands, and not necessarily a more distant area, even if inhabited by the same ethnic group or tribe. However, it was not necessarily the tribesmen who had changed from years earlier, but the organization and administration of the Roman military. Some sources state that by the 5th century, the army no longer recorded the names and details of men who had enlisted in the army. Theodosius had even allowed some army deserters to go home if they could find a substitute. It appeared the emphasis of the late Roman army was on quantity and not quality. Sons of veterans were now forced to enlist, and even slaves were called to arms in 406 AD. Using slaves as soldiers was almost always severely frowned upon earlier in the empire, but now the stigma had all but vanished. Furthermore, a strong central cadre of trained and Romanized troops was diminished by the end of the 4th century. The loss at Adrianople in 378 damaged the Eastern Army, and the Battle of the Frigidus in 394 affected the army in the West. Replacements were not as easy to find as in the past. Citizens were less eager to volunteer or respond to conscription. The increasing billeting of troops among urban citizens didn't help this problem, as the citizens were often bullied and extorted by the Roman army commanders and regular troops. These troops were often ill-disciplined and had no experience of performing on the battlefield when sent to the front lines. Also, during the late period, the primary motivation behind men wishing to attain a high rank within the army appears to have been financial gain instead of battlefield glory. To subsidize their paltry income from the government, many of these commanders chose to extort revenue from the civilian population. Eventually, regions furthest from Rome were being abandoned little by little. By the end of the empire, only Gaul and Italy itself were being properly defended, and even then by barbarian generals and not proper Romans. The demise of the Roman army in the west was not a cataclysmic event, but a slow and sad death. There was no official decree disbanding the Roman army in the 5th century, and most soldiers on the frontiers were left to sort things out for themselves. In some cases, soldiers continued to live in the forts without the official support and infrastructure from the imperial government. When the old order was dead, these soldiers would have to decide for themselves what to do, because now, they were on their own.